three. Okay, we're going to skip two sections and come back to them. For today, I want to do chapter 10, section 5. And we're on page 488. Get there. So our objective today, volumes of prisms and cylinders. And we have a couple of vocab. It's not particularly bad. And we're going to do three or four examples, and then you'll have your assignment. If you somehow get done with your assignment, you need to do something academic, or you can always have the hammer. So on page 488, they don't always make it quite as clear as I would like. Um, we're actually going to do the vocab in an opposite order. So instead of doing the volume postulate first, we're going to do the prism cylinder volume formula, which is just volume is equal to the area of the base times the height of the prism. That's it. So don't make it any harder than that. And it kind of makes sense. If you were going to like, if you have the area of the base one unit high and you stack it to that many height, that's where you're at. So like, let's say you have those little kitty blocks. And your little kitty blocks, you're going to put down four blocks and three blocks. and you stack them five high. Well, you've got 12 blocks on the bottom, then you're going to have 12 blocks on the second layer until you're five high. So the area of the base is three times four is 12, because that's the area of a rectangle. Your height is five, and 12 times five is 60 units. And we're doing cubes now, folks. We're talking about what, how many little cubes would fit in a box that's 4 by 3 by 5. Now, there's a couple other formulas I actually want to add. The first one is rectangular prism. Length times width times height. That's it. Don't multiply by anything else. You get 60 units cubed. Now, this is not going to work for triangular prisms. It's not going to work for trapezoidal prisms. It's only going to work for rectangular prisms. Let's talk about cubes. So if we're doing a cube... Well, we're doing length times width times height, but they're all the same. So I'm going to do side times side times side, or s to the third power, which is why we call it cubed. Cubing tells you the volume of a cube. I know, it's shocking. So if I take a cube... Say that it's 5 by 5 by 5. My volume is 5 cubed, or 125. Let's say that these are inches, cubic inches. And just like we did with area, we write inches cubed, we say cubic inches. The last specific one I want is a cylinder. It's just like, I think it's kind of silly that the book doesn't do... Well, they kind of do it on the top of page 491. But they don't kind of bold it or make it quite as clear as they could. Base times height. What is the base of a cylinder? Pi r squared. So what's the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared h. So let's draw a cylinder.
Um, yeah, let's pick a couple numbers. How about three centimeters and seven centimeters? We'll just plug it right into the formula, folks. Pi, three squared, seven. And it wants a time sign there. So it's either 63 pi cubic centimeters or approximately 197.92 cubic centimeters. So those are four vocabs. Really the only vocab that you, well, actually we're going to add a fifth vocab. Incorrect. But out of these four, this is the big one. All the others come from that. That works for everything, but it's just a lot easier if you have a cube, a rectangular prism, or a cylinder to go directly to those formulas, which are all based off the first formula. So there are formulas. Next, we're going to talk about, and I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong, Cavalier's principle. I'll spell it right because I'm looking in the book. It's not actually a very hard principle. Make sure you spell principle correctly. We spell it like this. We don't spell it like the principle of Mrs. Berger. Okay. I have a lot of cards. Your names are on these cards because that's how we pick on our volunteers every day. We could think of this stack of cards as a rectangular prism. So I could multiply length times width times the height. Now we get the volume of the deck of cards. And all they're saying is if I like tilt the cards, like if I go this way with the cards and kind of put them in an angle, well, have I added any cards? <coughs> Bless me. Have I taken any cards away? Well, no. So the volume of that deck of cards at an angle is not any different than when I had it straight up or down. So if it's oblique, and we give them funny names, the volume has not changed in the least. This has the same volume that it did at, like, all slanty, compared to when I began. So that's his principle, which is just that volume doesn't change The objects, I'm just going to say tilted. Now you still have to kind of be flat, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa doesn't quite apply because the roof's at an angle. But if I take the same height, a little difficult to draw, but it should be the same distance there and the same difference there. Now our surface area might be slightly tweaked, it might be slightly bigger on the tilted one, but the volumes are equal. So that is the vocab. The next file is going to do the examples.